joining us now, uh, Akin Rotimi. Uh, he's the Akin Rotimi Jr., the House Spokesman and Chairman, House Committee on Media and uh, Public Affairs. Many thanks for joining us. Good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. Uh, all right. So I just uh, quickly uh, want to get to you. Um, I'm sure you heard uh, some of the comments made by Mr. Epia, you know, talking about uh, what the National Assembly should be doing and the fact that the main issue is the, f is, mm -hmm. is the lack of trust. There's no uh, confidence. Uh, the people, there's no connection between them and the people that they are representing and all of that. And then now you have come out with uh, an eight-point legislative agenda. Uh, could you please just tell us, what is this eight-point agenda about and uh, what informed, uh, uh, you know, the National Assembly coming up with it? Uh, thank you very much and thank you for having me again and uh, good morning, of course, uh, OK. Uh, is one of our partners that works very closely with us uh, in terms of uh, um, helping our work in the National Assembly. Uh, to start with, um, every House of Representatives is guided by every session, every assembly of the House of Representatives is guided by three principal, uh, you know, instruments. Number one, the Nigerian Constitution, 1999 as amended, uh, the House rules, and then the legislative agenda. So it's something that has happened in previous assemblies um, that guides uh, members and even our partners, leadership, and everyone. You know, to walk around the framework. You can imagine there are 360 members from different parties, uh, different parts of the country. So it's important that we have a framework within which um, you frame your uh, bills and motions and all legislative activities, you know, so that we have as much traction as possible and can be as productive as possible. Uh, this is particularly important uh, because for the first time in the Fourth Republic, you have eight political parties that are represented in Parliament. So it's important that you have a multi-partisan uh, document and guide that everybody buys into. And I think it's um, a lot of um, credence, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of commendation should be given to the leadership, Right Honorable Tajini Abbas, Right Honorable Benjamin Carlo, and of course, the chairman of the ad hoc committee that produced this, Professor Julius A. Honvere, that thought it wise that um, we have this legislative agenda. And he, he did mention that um, it, it was produced through a consultative process. You know, we had engagements with civil society, we had engagements with media, we had inputs. And you see, every, every assembly, the legislative agenda for every assembly is basically determined by what is going on at the time. So in the country at this point in time, you have um, you know, issues around the economy, around security, around um, you know, health care, social services. And now all these priorities you know, have fed into um, you know, this document, which is going to guide our legislative activities over the next uh, four years. And you know, central to what you said as well is um, the issues of public confidence. Yes, very correct. Um, the National Assembly. So when you hear anyone say, oh, the National Assembly, legislators, and all of that, you know, they will tell you some things that happened many years ago, even decades ago. You know what I mean? So it's important for people to realize that there's, um, there's a House of Representatives and then there's a the 10th Assembly, right? And we are essentially um, created a legacy for ourselves by starting out um, to address the historical issues around apathy, around cynicism, around distrust of you know, broadly speaking, the political class and political elite, but particularly about legislators. As you know, many years of military incursion in our body polity meant that, um, you know, Nigerians were used more to, you know, the executive arm of government, you know, and the judiciary, but the legislator, you know, legislature, you know, many people still don't understand. What do we even need a, legislator, a legislative arm of government for? So these are the issues that we want to confront. Yes, there were mistakes that were made uh, in previous assemblies, which we have the opportunity to be able to address and, uh, you know, be able to, to essentially address the issue of distrust by open parliament, like you mentioned, like proactive engagement, like uh, ensuring. And that's why you see central to the entire document is a feedback mechanism, is uh, being proactive with providing information, not only on legislative activities, but also key developments within the house i think that one thing that um government has not done well enough particularly the legislature is um sharing our success stories and sharing um you know information about all the good that has been done so for example you have 
constituency outreach you have which is one of the you know constitutional roles of, of parliament you have 360 members doing extensive work in every part of nigeria and you know it's just often not reported enough you also have you know critical arms like you know public petitions the fact that any nigerian can write to their member and say look i want you to help me table this matter before you know parliament and these issues are tabled on the floor refer to the house committee on public petitions and you can actually see many cases where quote unquote ordinary nigerians are able to get soccer are able to get their issues addressed so i think these are the important things for us and for myself and members of the committee on media and public affairs is to blow our trumpet loud enough so people know just exactly what it is that we're doing okay uh thank you uh Aki Rotemi, uh junior for that um, explanation giving us uh, a better clarification of what the eight point agenda is all about but a lot of people are saying that uh uh, it, it seems that the eight-point agenda that you have rolled out, it uh, aligns with the renewed hope agenda of the <coughs> federal government. And uh, the fear is that we do hope, or what that's what I say, that this, uh, this Tenth National Assembly will not be uh, just a rubber stamp, you know, mm -hmm. for the executive. Uh, how would you be able to be able to provide that checks and balances, mm -hmm. you know, that is supposed to do, to, to, to do as one of your uh, legislative functions? Also, how do you intend to incorporate the items on, on this agenda into the work plan of the 139 uh, standing committees that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that you have, uh, which is, uh, and also translates, you know, to the dividend of democracy? for the common man on the street yeah thank you very much so to start with the i mean there's, it's just a coincidence that you have the executive arm of government having you know eight points um in the agenda is it a coincidence or there's something about the number eight <laughs> <laughs> well I don't know, you can tell me right but to be honest it's it's really just a coincidence because for <laughs> our eight points agenda it's essentially strengthening good governance improving national security law yeah. reform uh economic growth social sector reform, uh, inclusive and open parliament, uh, influencing directing Nigeria's foreign policy, climate change and environmental sustainability. Now, yes, there are cross-cutting um, agendas, right, between what it is that, you know, I might just read that as well, what the executive arm of government, the executive arm of government has food security, ending poverty, economic growth and job creation, access to capital, inclusivity, uh, improving security, rule of law, fighting corruption. So you'll see that there's a nexus somewhere, right, between what it is that they have. But again, um, Nigerians, you know, essentially need to be able to understand the role of the executive as against the legislature. And it's a critical um, uh, difference that, you know, many people don't have, you know, to understand that many of the things they demand from the legislature yeah. is that fall, actually falls within the ambit of the executive. So for us, when you go through the legislative agenda, you see we're essentially looking at legislative interventions, both in terms of uh, reviewing extant laws or, um, you know, looking at loopholes to be able to, you know, establish new laws that address certain issues to help the executive to function better. Because the principal arm that deals with um, implementing policies and programs is the executive. It's not the legislature. So ours is to hold them uh, to account and make sure that there's uh, proper oversight. So for us again, like I mentioned, when you talk about a rubber stamp, if you follow the proceedings of the House, you know that it's very far from a rubber stamp. Because, you know, traditionally, the Green Chamber has always been that activist arm of the legislature of our bic bicameral system. You have 360 uh, members from different parts of the country, right? You have eight political parties represented. The ruling party, yes, but there, there are seven others. So you find that there is um, the need for greater consensus building, right, in all our activities. But aside of that, it's far from it that, you know, will be a rubber stamp to the executive. Yes, leadership, and it's there enshrined in our, in our legislative agenda that um, executive legislature, um, you know, cooperation, collaboration, and a seamless engagement is very important to us. But it's important that we also keep that distance and make sure that we're able to um, hold them to account. Now, you talked about 
the standing committees. You see that every single committee has a clear mandate. Right now, we're revising uh, the House rules to ensure that every uh, committee's jurisdiction and their their mandate is very very clear. Okay. And um, you find that there are very important um, you know committees that were also created. So, for example, you have the committee on the monitoring of the legislative agenda. That in itself is a committee. Because it's important that we don't just reel out all these documents like, mm -hmm. you know, OK said. It's important that we're able to follow through. Mm -hmm. It's important that we're able to um, look at milestones and see if we're meeting those milestones. Because failure is incremental and, you know, success as well is incremental. So right here, we have um, short-term, medium-term, long-term provisions all clearly indicated. And I think that it's important for Nigerians, right? Because... Um, it's important that we have, you know, that sort of vigilance. We are actually inviting Nigerians, individuals, institutions, organizations to hold us to account. Okay. So, for I mean, we have published our documents to say this is what is going to guide us. And, and so, after four timelines. years, if we're not satisfied, then we can always uh, hold you responsible. No, you don't wait for four years, actually. <laughs> I would encourage that every step, because here we have short term, we have medium term, we have long you see, and I think that for I personally, um, for me personally as a legislator, and I, I believe that I share that same sentiment with most legislators, we are in a hurry to make a difference. The issues that Nigerians face at this time are um, especially daunting. We know with the removal of the fuel subsidy, uh, the economic crisis is, is very intense. You know, security challenges. Just the other day, um, we had a sectoral debate that had the um, defense chiefs, the service chiefs in attendance because almost every plenary day you have one or one or two security related motions you know every part of nigeria is going through the scourge of insecurity at this time so we can't afford okay for four years to say um you know the legislature have failed or government has failed we mm. can't afford that we need month on month month on month to say what is the legislator doing in fact we have a program that will be coming on stream soon you know um titled waiting legislator waiting reps they do serve okay you know so we would, we would echo what it is that nigerians say because you need to be able to know what we are doing every single minute that we spend in office lives literally depend on us and we're conscious of that huge responsibility that we carry and we hope we invite everyone to hold us to account to what it is that we've promised. All to right, a beautiful um, Akin uh, Rotimi Jr. Of course, we'll get back to you so that uh, you, you know, um, explain some issues that you raised while, while you were uh, talking. Uh, but while you were speaking, uh, we.